Why, hello there. Guess who? Mm hmm. It is me, and uh, the fan is on and making all the noise, and I'll turn it off. I don't know if this happens to you, but I have this landlord that uh, he likes to come over every now and again and clean my apartment. Just, you know, because he's friendly. Oh, how do you like my new wallpaper? I call it um, mountainous. See, because there's mountains in the back. I never mind. Anyway, he's been here all day cleaning my house and making a nuisance of himself. And he finally left. And that, so that gives me a chance to show you my new uh, little hex editor that I've been working on. I haven't done much on the other thing, but uh, I, I certainly made some progress with this. Check this out. Now, this is loading up a file, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, notice where the cursor is. I can now uh, type in here only uh, um, correct hexadecimal characters like one is good, two is good, and see how it takes me here to the next line. I can type uh, F E oh dear E uh, you know zero and you'll notice like uh, I put a forty one here that the, the letter A appeared here. You can do the same thing here. And that gives me an A. So it's uh, updating uh, the this side as I type stuff in this side. And if I keep typing numbers, now it's taking me back, right? Like that. Just like a regular hex editor. On the other hand, if I'm on this side, I can type in the regular characters. See? And it keeps me restricted to this side. And similarly, this side is getting updated. The other side is getting updated. Wow! So, how to accomplish all that magic? Well, uh, mainly, uh, you know, lots of trial and error and getting things wrong and trying to get the count right and trying to stop this edit control from <laughs> dinging. In fact, I spent, I probably spent uh, a good half a day just trying to get the edit control to not, like, ring, like a uh, system asterisk bing sound when I'd, um, you know, type in a key, even if I edited and everything. And uh, I had ha had it working where it wasn't doing that, and, and I was uh, so upset that it stopped working. When I finally did get it to work again, I immediately lab labeled it on the project. Anyway, but uh, it hasn't done it yet again, so it's not. Uh, I think I, I resolved that. Now, the, the way to do something like this is uh, you have to subclass the edit control, right? Like this is still just a dialog. And in the dialog. Okay, fine. In the dialog, there is an edit control. This just a regular edit control that doesn't have a vertical scroll bar because I have to do that part manually. Oh yeah, you see this this uh, thing. How I managed to get that the right height and everything. I have a well, never mind. I, I made a little unit test that's kind of cute for my for my boxes. But we'll skip it. Uh, all right. So 
wind or dialogue prompt. One of the th things I added that, that I think is quite useful is a macro way up in the common here in basic called two macros to do with strings and string lengths and using that fancy new keyword I learned about. Where is it now? It's wherever I define all the strings. Here. See all these strings here that I'm defining? It would be nice if at, in making these definitions I also wouldn't have to compute their lengths, you know, if I ever needed the length. So I added this here thing. Define string length and then given the, the name of a string. And it works. So for instance, digits. There's a there is a constant global variable, pretty much like a number defined, um, called len in little letters digits. And that would be the string length of digits. It's called len. Another thing though that you might want to do is define a string, your own string, and have it do this at the same time, all in one step. Back here. Uh, define string and length. Give a name and give a character string like this, right? And then it will define, actually now it defines two things. The uh, length and count. Count is the number of elements. Length is the length. You know, string length is one less than the count. So, uh, <clears throat> so now uh, I'm able to use that number defined here instead of calling string length uh, because this is one of my defined string constants. It has a length which is a uh, constant. I think that I don't know what the compiler actually puts in here. It it's probably just puts in the number six. Let's see. No, it does seem to. I don't see six. Oh, wait. You see it's 16, and there it is. Push 10. See? It, uh, it hasn't invented any variable or anything for this, even though it's declared like an extern. It's, it's a, Equivalent to a number defined, it can be used. Um, it can be used uh, as a literal. It is a literal, and when you declare it this way, as I, as I found out before, uh, then it's not a static. It's not used as a static variable, which is the implementation. If you don't use that specifier becomes a static variable and no uh, memory needs to be allocated for it. Uh, okay. Now, how to do the magic? Well, uh, I have put this in a function of subclass the edit control, which uh, subclasses the edit control. Surprise, surprise. Meaning that it replaces its window procedure, a special procedure called uh, the stub wind proc edit, which is defined as a member of my class here. See? Now the editor itself. But what I wanted to do was, uh, you know, I have my seat, my class, uh, TS Edit, but I wanted to extend some of the features of that class, and I started writing it in here, which is probably better for 
certain things because doing it doing it this way messes up the uh, uh, syntax highlighting and what or not highlighting but um, the intelli thing intelli thing stops working properly but in any case my edit is a custom edit control it has its own wind proc I've decided uh, now <laughs> I'm gonna start call first this was called po pointer outer or something or container or something as I usually call these things that is this object is contained I've even indicated here it's contained and declared and defined within another class, right? It just like that com thing, it's one of those things that knows its own location and the location of other elements in the outer object. In com, that would be your unc outer. So I'm going to call them unc outer from now on, even though it's not unknown at all. It's a, it's a binary editor. Uh, yeah, so if I want, I can retrieve the unc outer uh, quite easily because I know that we uh, could have done it either way. I could have put the this pointer of my edit in the edit controls user data area or the pointer to the main class. I chose the main class. But it doesn't matter which, because from one you can always find the other, right? This here could have been the address of m under of this thing, right? Which it could retrieve, and it knows its own offset within the base, the containing class, so it could access all of the members of the containing class. It's a friend. It, 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 the container is a friend of this, and everybody's a friend, and it's a big happy family. And that's the way you do these things. You make everybody friends, because they're all part of the same class anyway. And uh, then you can, from one object, pull out information about other objects in the same container. Now I think there's a bird in my house actually inside. Oh, it's trapped. Did you want to see my wallpaper again? I call it mountains. Mountainous, sorry, mountainous. Maybe better if I don't uh, oh no that's not the okay. If I get rid of this thing. It looks a little nicer. Go away. There we go. I don't know. I, 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 if this one's starting to grow on me. <laughs> Come on. Sorry. I'm very sorry. Sorry. That was a bad joke. Okay. The editor itself. It's uh, once the once. One has subclass the. I changed the uh, window procedure of the editor to this thing. What this thing does <coughs> uh, when when a message message comes in, it pulls out from the data area a this pointer to this type of object. From that. For that, this it can then uh, obtain the edit edit object whose wind proc it thus calls, and um, uh, therefore I don't there doesn't need to be an h wind parameter or anything in here, and and this wind proc is just like a regular wind proc for one of my regular windows in that. Um, this object has access to all of its members. Now, where is it? Here. You see, uh, it can call 
all functions that have to do with edit control, like get cursor, pause, um, and whatnot. And it can also obtain the unc outer, like this, p editor, and call its functions. It can do anything it likes. Now, what I'm doing here is um, to simplify things. Uh, is uh, if if a uh, okay. Now the the difficulty with with this sort of thing is how are you going to handle the keyboard, right? In such a way that you don't have to learn all of the nitty bitty gritty details about the keyboard. Uh, and so that you can still pick up the keys that you want, which are just the basic characters, and let the edit control handle things like, you know, shift, left arrow, and all that stuff that, that is, that would be difficult to, to do, to handle on your own. You have to, you'd have to process these intensely complicated messages for key down and key up handling is very very difficult there are all kinds of flags that go along with these key uh, these uh, messages but WM car is quite simple it's just a character in fact it's a it's a result of processing these messages uh, that a WM car is posted for simplicity uh, to a window procedure, you don't need it. Don't, no, you, nobody needs to handle WM car, uh, but they use it because it's simple. So the way I've got it set up here, <clears throat> if it's a this return one, either here or here is important for, to make it stop making noise. If it's a down or an up, and this thing, this function says basically, um, it's a re regular character. Yeah, that's a re is is could be part of a C expression. So that's like uh, letters and numbers and. Uh, Probably brackets and things too, but it wouldn't. Uh, oh no, no, would not not brackets. It would be letters and numbers and an underscore. I think anything that can go in and into the name of a C function, right? Now I'm just casting W param and not being very careful, but. Uh, what this does in that case is return a one, just return. Let me just see the help on this first. Because those are the characters I want to handle. Oh, wait a minute. No, most important, B handle is set to true. Can be used as an identifier. So this says regular character. I don't even know why this works, but somehow, even though I'm saying that I've handled this message and I'm returning a one, well, that's why probably it stopped pinging because this probably says that I've eaten the, eaten the message. If I return zero here, it makes it sound, even though the this processing still works, it makes a noise every time I hit a key. When I do this, it's saying that I've handled the key, right, and and I've de dequeued it, and, and the caller should not uh, do any further processing, uh, which is odd. Because uh, I still get these WM cards. I'm not sure why, but they come in. I'm happy about that. And for everything else, I handle this false, so I can still select 
I should still be able to, to select text. I don't know if copy would work. But see, that, that still works. But I'm not handling the arrow keys, right? Uh, those are those don't come in through WM car but they're not C sims so they'll they'll end up in this uh, clause now when do I say handle this true oh it's, it's default to true and it becomes false in this case if it's like an extended character up and down <coughs> would not fall into here uh, because uh, it's not a CSIM. It wouldn't go into here because you wouldn't get a WM car for it. Well, you wouldn't get one of these for those. So it would be handled false and the system would handle it. Alright, sorry for that diversion. Uh, now, Uh, if I am an editor, right? So I can get the, curs the cursor offset. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm calling the editor's draw function. Why am I drawing it? Should I do that after? Oh no, no, this is before. Okay. Um, this after getting the cursor position, I call this function edit at, which is a question. Um, did an edit occur at position x y given this key, right? If it's the appropriate key, and there are different scenarios as you saw. If an edit did occur, then I call the draw function. But only invalidate. Uh, this doesn't have to be 80. I know exactly the length of each line. It's it's a number defined. It's 78. It turns out. But anyway, this is good enough. Invalidate a rect. Uh, L height here is the average character height. So height of one character with 80, 80, so essentially one line, and uh, just to be doubly sure, and inflate that ref slightly, um, <clears throat> and then so even though it's drawn all of the characters, only uh, one line gets drawn on the screen, so you don't get any flicker. As I'm editing, you'll notice it, it's not, even though it's drawing all of the the entire thing, if I type a number here, oh, it does flick it, doesn't it? It shouldn't. It's probably the edit control itself. I should, I should, uh, see. I thought I had this. Maybe because now it's slower with the recorder running, I can see it. When I'm normally running it, I don't see any flicker. It's not a lot to draw anyway. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah, it's doing the whole thing. It shouldn't. And that's why this part gets fixed up magically too, except that uh, it, it shouldn't, I'm only invalidating a small bit, and it must be that the edit control is, uh, runs its own invalidate function when, uh, when I set the text. So I could be more careful and just... Hmm. I'm not sure how to fix it because if it, uh, I can't just set a little bit of text as an edit control. Right? Oh no, I can. I can. I can. I can get it. Just like with the other editor, I can get it. The handle to its uh, 
internal buffer, make a modification, right, to the internal buffer. Uh, no, but then it'll probably just redraw its whole cell. Not sure. Anyway, all I'm going to do now is uh, put that into my editor. And how does this edit app work? Uh, I uh, made a little. Uh, as I was writing this, I was adding things, you know, to do. It was by making up functions that I hadn't written yet. Things like this, you know, uh, change x and y to a an offset, a buffer offset, right? And uh, I just handle these cases, uh, and then I go and write the functions. Uh, and one of them, for instance, is uh, advanced cursor. That happens uh, at the end here. Uh, if an edit occurs, then I want to advance the cursor. Complicated problem. So I turn that into a function. Uh, and depending on where where the edit occurred, you know, it either goes one byte more or one position more, or it goes uh, maybe three, I guess. No, two or one. If it's a nibble edit, it's a other add to its position two or one, depending on the, or if there's a space to jump over. Whereas uh, if it happens to be at the end of the middle section, then it's got to jump all the way around to the next line and wind up, you know. If I type a number here, it's going to leave me here, right? And that's what this test is for. This happens to be that position. Otherwise, if I'm in the, the this area, which is the uh, the character representation area here, right? Then it, it's got to take me from the next thing I type to here, which it does. Uh, and that, that one's actually pretty easy because I, I made a, I drew out one dummy line so I can, I know it's length. <coughs> uh, Otherwise, just add one, and now this function again is used to determine if an error occurred in obtaining the offset where to make the edit, right, in the data buffer. And then once I have an offset, I, my buffer class has a thing to overlay on top of its data, uh, some other buffer, in this case it's a buffer with exactly one byte, and uh, we do that, overlay the data, overlay the data, and then draw, and then draw as you saw. Wherever that function was. My edit. In the wind proc, WM car, if an edit occurs, uh, that means that the data buffer is changed. So redraw the whole thing and only invalidate a tiny little rank. But apparently, that doesn't work. And then advance the cursor, however, the appropriate method is for advancing the cursor. The data is being updated, and so to save, to save now is just a matter of writing out. Right, this is actually editing the uh, buffer as I'm going along, so it should work transparently. I just have to put it in my notepad thing.
So anyway, that, that's something of interest. If you think, if you're feeling ambitious and you want to write a hex editor, uh, was, you can take this video as uh, offering some suggested uh, ways to handle um, the various uh, scenarios that come up for a hex editor. See you. <laughs> Sorry. Let me show you my wall. I just want to show you my wallpaper once more, just to let you have a look. It wouldn't have been fair for me not to bring it up again. God. Never mind. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be a pun. Okay. See you.